This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. Religious freedom laws. Some say they're just the latest version of Jim Crow. Others say they're necessary to protect the First Amendment rights of everyone. This is the Citizen Link Report. Hi, I'm Kim Troby, sitting in for Stuart Shepard, and Bruce Houseconnect is joining me today. He's a legal analyst with Focus on the Family. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Kim. So today we're going to talk about religious freedom laws, and there have been several states who have taken a look at these. More recently, two of them have actually taken action, Kansas being unsuccessful in passing theirs, and Arizona, who now has theirs passed, and it awaits uh, the signature of Governor Jan Brewer. Let's talk about what f a religious freedom laws are. Well, generally speaking, they follow the First Amendment in protecting rights of conscience of believers, not just Christians, but of all faiths. And it keeps Christians out of jail because more and more we're looking at the coercive force of government laws requiring people of faith to do things that are contrary to their faith. So these laws are an attempt to buttress the First Amendment and what, the, what protections it already gives to Christians and other people of faith. Now, some people have called them Jim Crow, and of course that refers to the post-Civil War era laws that, that really came up with uh, whites-only restaurants and water fountains and school segregation. But you say that's not the case. Well, no. The reason that uh, it's called Jim Crow is because it, it simply forced uh, restaurants and public accommodations across the board to refuse service to uh, uh, African Americans or put a whites-only in a blacks only uh, segregation in place. What we're talking about here is something quite different. This is a message oriented objection. Christians object to furthering, celebrating, promoting same sex marriage, which is contrary to their belief. And that's what these laws simply do is they allow those Christians to do so without the threat of government fines, penalties, or jail. Okay. Right now I want to bring in Kathy Herod with the Center for Arizona Policy. Arizona just recently passed a Religious Freedom Act. In fact, it was uh, sort of a, a fix uh, to a Religious Freedom Act that was already in place. And we have Kathy Herod visiting us on Skype today. Hey, Kathy, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, like I said, your state has passed a Religious Freedom Bill, but you are getting a lot of backlash. Tell me why. Well, Senate Bill 1062 in 10 is what you said. It's to fix a problem, a flaw in our state Religious Freedom Restoration Act that is the same as the flaw in the New Mexico law. It's to bring our state law into the line with really what court decisions have been in other states. There have been no issues um, like the parade of horribles that we've seen um, being brought about about 1062. I want to emphasize that everything you're hearing in the national press, what you're hearing about 1062, it simply is inaccurate. Our opponents could not defeat the bill on its merits, and so they have decided to threaten a boycott of Arizona and make it look like we're the, you know, the crazy state, the bigoted state, all those types of um, threats and attacks that have been, we've seen it since last Thursday, are false. They have nothing to do with the actual language of the bill is. Our position is that Arizonans, Americans, should be free to live and work according to their faith. And we want to ensure that whether the government is a party to the lawsuit or not. And that's simply what we're trying to do through 1062. Kathy, this is uh, Bruce. Uh, I know that uh, Governor Brewer is facing a lot of heat from the press and pressure groups about this bill. And she only has a couple more days to sign. What, when is that deadline and, and what have you heard so far? Well, the deadline is Saturday. Um, Governor Brewer has been out of state for national governor's meetings. I I believe she arrives back today on Tuesday, um, so she will have until Saturday. I frankly think we will get a decision Wednesday or Thursday from her. I don't think she will let this go on all week. Um, the heat here um, has been incredible. All right. Kathy, we appreciate you taking time for us today. Thanks. Thank you. Now, Bruce, we even have Christians who are also being quoted as saying that they believe these laws are embarrassing to the faith because Jesus would uh, provide services for every, anyone, regardless of what they believed or how they lived. Where do they get it wrong? Well, Jesus was a friend of sinners. We know that. And we know that he dined with sinners, that he felt comfortable in the presence of sinners. 
but he never condoned their sin. Think about the woman caught in adultery who was brought uh, before him and was, they were ready to stone her and he gave the famous response, you know, whoever is without sin cast the first stone and they all walked away. We forget the ending of that story, which is he addresses the woman and says, go and sin no more which he's not condoning her sin. He's telling her to straighten her life out. And, and you see that with other examples throughout the Bible. He loves sinners, but he wants them saved. He wants them in relationship with him. Mm. And one of the things that we've seen is overwhelming support by uh, citizens for these kinds of bills. The latest being today out of Kansas, 90% of Kansans agree that Kansas lawmakers should fully protect religious freedom. 70% of those say it's, it's not okay to forfeit some of their religious freedoms in order to accommodate another group. And we've seen that in polls before. Talk a little bit about the popularity of religious freedom laws. Well, these are extremely popular, but you wouldn't know it based on what uh, the press is saying, because the press, of course, grabs the liberal cause and they try to shape the message and shape the public debate. But even last summer, I think uh, the pollster uh, uh, Scott Rasmussen did a national poll on this very issue about uh, wedding photographers was the, was the key case at the time coming from the New Mexico case. And uh, nationwide sampling of uh, Americans came up with 85% favor laws that would permit a wedding photographer with religious objections to photographing a same-sex wedding to be protected from having to do that. So this is extremely popular with the American public. They understand that this is not being used as a bludgeon over gays and lesbians, but it's a tool to protect religious conscience. All right, with something to watch, Bruce. Thanks so much. You always have great information for us. Thanks for having me, Kim. And we want to thank Kathy Herod with the Center for Arizona Policy for joining us today. We appreciate all of you who have written to share your thoughts and encouragement. You can always let us know what you're thinking at mail at citizenlink.com. And we encourage you to pray for your elected officials and for our nation. And as always, stand tall and be heard.